Hey guys, Bobby Rio here with Rob Judge, and today what we're going to talk about is essentially why girls go cold, why they lose interest, and why guys struggle to keep that strong attraction alive with a girl they really like. And this happens to nice guys a lot, where they start dating a girl, and initially it's like, bam, chemistry, they're everything in common, they have these great dates, and then like a month goes by and he, you start get that, getting that feeling in the pit of your stomach that something's just different. And little by little, uh, it starts with her taking longer to text you back, it, it turns into her kind of not being as available to hang out, and next thing you know she's giving you the, uh, I just don't have time for a relationship right now, or uh, you know, I don't see you in that sort of way. And you're sitting there going, what the hell just happened? So what we're going to talk about in this video is what actually happened and why she got bored and why she got lost, she, she lost interest. And it all starts with the word certainty. Because in a relationship, the tension and uncertainty is what creates the butterflies, right? Mm -hmm. And the more tension and the more uncertainty there is, the more butterflies she has, the more she's thinking about you when you're not around, which is, Rob and I have, have often said, that's what leads to her falling in love with you, becoming obsessed with you and chasing you. But everything guys tend to do in the beginning is to relieve that uncertainty. They want to make her as certain as possible, and it backfires immediately. So the first way guys tend to do this, right, is they either make promises, they reveal their hand, or they set up future expectations way too soon in a relationship. Well, one of the first ways I think guys really get this wrong is by making promises or giving her reassurances that they really don't, don't need to do and should not do early in the interaction. A lot of the times guys think, oh, the more sure I make her the relationship or my commitment to her, the better. And while that might work with your girlfriend or that might work you know, a month or two months into dating a girl, if you're doing that um, too, you know, too much too soon, it's, like you said, it's really gonna backfire and it's not gonna be pretty. Yeah, and girls, like, a lot of times we think we're doing what she wants because a girl will say something like, you know, so what do you what do you what do you see this? Do you see this? You know, where do you see this going? Or what am I to you? And like we go, we were like all of a sudden paranoid. Oh shit! She wants me to to tell her that I really like her and that I see a future. So we start going like, yeah, like I, I you know I really like you and I see a future with you. Or sometimes you do it on your own. Sometimes you you know we get this 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 bottled up like you just want to blurt it out because you're having this great date with her and you know I've done it where you know after a couple of dates I'm like. You know, I really like you. Um, it could be subtle. Sometimes it's something as subtle as you're too aggressive about insinuating things that you guys should do together in the future. Like maybe she mentions uh, she likes to go skiing, and it's in the summertime, and you start saying, "Well, you know, this winter, this is a great ski spot we got to go to," and you're like kind of planning out in the future, which is making her go, "Oh, he's thinking long term," which kind of there's a little bit of certainty that she's got now, oh, he is thinking long-term, when in reality, you always kind of want her guessing. Um, the second thing in, in, is, is more, um, more tactical in the sense that uh, you want to not reveal things about yourself all at once. Um, a lot of times as guys, we get diarrhea of the mouth. As we're talking to a girl, we want to just tell her all our accomplishments, everything about herself, because we think that the more we tell her, the more she's going to you know, like and trust us. But a lot of times, it, it, it actually um, diffuses some of her curiosity about you. Yeah, and one of the easiest ways uh, I always advise guys, you know, when they first meet a girl, is that when you see that she's interested in something, when you say something, maybe she asks your job, and you tell her, and her eyes light up, and she wants to know more about it, or you tell her some place that you traveled, and she wants to know more about it, we're not necessarily saying you, you know you can never tell her or to, to withhold that information from her, but you should kind of see that information, see her interest, see her curiosity as um, you know now now you sort of have like a little uh, piece of cheese to, to dangle and you know it, or or a carrot to dangle in front of her to, uh, to to get her to work a little bit, to chase a little bit, and uh, just really quickly an example that I always like to give guys or students when they're asking me you know how to get a date is. Once you, you hit one of those high points, and I'll just give a quick example to show you exactly what I'm talking about, 
when I was when I in my early twenties, I was working as a freelance writer, or when, uh, and um, a lot of the times when I tell girls that you know I'm a writer, they would they, their eyes would light up, and you know, it's not me here every day. They would say, "Oh wow, what do you write for?" or um, "Have I ever read anything you've written?" or you know, stuff like that. You know, a lot of times, especially when I was in New York, girls would be that would be something that would be interesting to girls, and. A lot of guys would think, oh wow, she's interested now. I should just tell her everything about it. Tell her about the magazines and about the, you know, all this different stuff. And and I did that for a while and it didn't go anywhere. And then I realized the best response to that, and now I use this response all the time, whenever I see the, the, those, those eyes light up and I see that interest level in something I said, is I would just respond, you know, we can talk about that now, but to be honest with you, that's a, a topic best discussed over a round of drinks, or that's best discussed over uh, a glass of wine in my favorite in my favorite wine bar, you know, whatever. You know, you could kind of take, you know, kind of like, you know, make that your own or you know, give it your own take, um, your own take on the line. But the idea is that you want to sort of tease her and you want to use that curiosity and that, and that excitement for what you do um, rather than just tell her you want to use it as um, something that's going to get a future date, to get her out, to get her thinking about you and excited to see you again. Yeah, I mean, think about how much more powerful it is, right? If you've been dating a girl for uh, three, four weeks, right? And, you know, a month into the relationship, you casually mention that, oh, you spent two months in China, you know, when you were in your 20s, as opposed to having told her that right away. Now she's like, well, what else do I know? You were in China for two months? And then, you know, a few weeks later, she finds out that you were, you know, an extra in a movie or whatever, you know, whatever, whatever interesting things that are in your life, the more you're, you're kind of leaving these breadcrumbs where she's always wondering what's coming next. And that's a big part of it is what's coming next. The last thing you want is to be the movie where she already knows the ending. She knows what's going to happen. And that's a big mistake my nice guys make is they are the book that the ending is like written, you know, within three minutes in the book, she knows what's going to happen with the nice guy. Uh, another mistake guys make, and another reason girls get bored, is because guys tend to want to leave her insecurity about um, you being with other women. And I'll, I'll give you an example. So, yeah, so an example is, and this actually happened to me the other day, my friend was at a, my house for a party, and as he's leaving, a girl that he had just been dating for a few weeks texted him, so are there any cute girls at the party, you know? And, you know, a lot of times as a guy, we want to alleviate that, you know, insecurity in the girl. You want to say, oh, no, there's nobody here. Or there are, but I didn't talk to any of them. Uh, sometimes it's, it, it's more advanced. You know, some of the girls will be direct and she'll be like, so are you, are you still seeing anybody since we started dating? And the nice guy is immediately going to go, no, no. Where, you know, a much better answer, you know, my standard answer was, yeah, but you're my favorite. You know, or, or like, or you can do the other way. You can exaggerate your no, or you're like, no, I would, I would never, ever, ever date anybody else. So you're just saying it in a way that, like, it could go one way or the other. She doesn't know, you know. Maybe even if you're not dating somebody else, you know, you, you're still giving her the impression that maybe you are or maybe you aren't instead of giving her the certainty that you're not. Yeah, but essentially, you're just really being playful with it. Um, again, Bobby's not saying to do this with, like, you know, say, if you, you know, if you're in a real fight with your girlfriend or you're in a committed relationship, but a lot of the times, guys, in their heads, they're in a committed relationship. If you've been seeing a girl, if you've been on, like, three or four dates with a girl, you're not in a committed relationship. So answering that question, like, oh, absolutely not, oh, and acting like you're the celibate monk because, you know, you went out and had pizza and, and a couple beers with, with, you know, some girl off Tinder, it's just not really, like, a pro move. You know, you definitely want to uh, keep her guessing, keep those wheels turning in her head, and let her let her be intrigued. Let, let be a little mysterious. Be a little aloof because uh, that's going to really um, stoke her attraction for you. Yeah, like a pro tip, right? So, like my friend who was at my my house for a barbecue, right? Um, you know, the good move in that thing is to turn your phone off. So if she's texting you, you don't even respond because then she's like wondering, "Oh, he's at this barbecue. Who's there? What's going on?" Um, whereas if you start responding, she knows like, okay, I can have his attention. Even though he's at this party, he's still spending like time replying to all my messages. Turn it off and hit her up when you get back or even better, hit her up in the next morning. You know, let her, let her have that, that, that overnight anxiety and that anxiety is a good thing. So, uh, the next thing that is sort of a fun thing to do that kind of, uh, prevents women from getting bored is making fun of chumps, right? And it could be a, a friend of yours, it could be a chump from a movie. In some way or another, you're essentially saying, I'm not like that guy. Um, maybe it could be a guy and, and like, 
he, his girlfriend treats him really bad, and you just make a comment like, I don't know why he doesn't just find another girl. And you're essentially letting her know that you have an abundance mentality. That you're the kind of guy that if, if things aren't going well, you'll just find another girl. Uh, movies are, are great, and, and you have a... Oh, absolutely. In fact, this is, this is such a key piece of information. It's such a great tip that Bobby's revealing. I actually, for a long time, used to call this the golden topic because what's so great about what Bobby's describing is when you're, when you're sort of poking fun at a guy who really doesn't get it, and maybe even if you know, he's acting too clingy and it's creepy or whatever, and you're pointing it out and you're, you're doing it in a fun way. You're not doing it like necessarily in, in a mean way. You're just kind of like, oh man, that guy, like, oh my God, like, the guy doesn't get it. The next thing you know, he's going to be standing outside her window with a boom box, you know, and, and you know, you're know you bringing some pop culture references and you know, you're know you creating this sort of fun vibe and you're letting her get in on it. You know, she's sort of adding her own jokes, you know, you're doing it right. Um, it's not just a fun thing. It's not just a fun topic um, for you and a girl that you know that you're kind of hitting it off with to, to vibe on. It's also um, the subtext uh, establishes that you're really not like that guy. You're not like this creepy guy. That she doesn't have to worry about you, you being a social liability, about you being weird or clingy, clingy or um, you know you're not going to do something that that that's egregiously wrong. Um, and one of my favorite places to do it, actually, if you're ever out at a bar, or, you know, if you're out meeting people in a social situation, is just look at look around. Like if you're talking to a girl that you just met, or a girl from the office, or a girl that you're interested in, um, even a girl you're on a date with, take her out to you know do some people watching together, and it creates this really nice conspiracy of you, you know it's you and her sort of like it's a you and her vibe where you're looking at different behaviors that guys do, and you know if you, if you walk to a you know your typical bar or nightclub or even just um, you know even a Starbucks. <laughs> you know, guys that are, are doing it wrong are in great abundance. So it's not going to be hard to find one of these guys and just be like, oh my God, look at this guy. He's, he's leaning in. He's looking a lot of my, you know, he's, he's got, doing the whole. And it's so easy because the girl will always go, oh, that's so sweet. I would love that, you know, especially in a movie. And you go, and my favorite line is, you would totally put that guy in a friend zone. You say it's sweet, mm -hmm. but that guy would be friend zone faster than you can say the word friend zone. And she'll always be like, oh, you're right. And the subtext is, is you're on the level, you know what's up, you're not like that guy. And you're saying it without saying it. Um, and that is really key. A lot of this is saying it without saying it, because you don't want to, you know, the thing is, is, is you can't say, I'm still dating other girls, because then you're like, you're, you're an trying asshole. hard, yeah. you're an asshole, you're, you're damaging, everything is left unsaid. And Rob and I have um, a video below where, where we're going to walk you through something called the Scrambler. And the whole idea of the Scrambler is that there's, four things that women are conditioned to chase. We just talked about one of them, which is uncertainty. Women are addicted to this feeling of not knowing what's going on, this uncertainty of where do I stand? Where, you know, and you may be like that with a girl, and, and part of the reason that we all, uh, at some point or another, get obsessed with a girl is because of that uncertainty. Well, that's just one of them. In the video, we're gonna reveal three more of the things that women are just programmed to chase. They're sort of hardwired to chase it. And we're also going to talk about the scrambler, which is a little sneaky, but it's really, really effective because it sneaks into a girl's mind and gets her obsessed with thinking about you. And as Rob and I always say, if you can get a girl thinking about you when you're not around, you can make her fall in love with you. So click the link below, learn the scrambler, and do us one favor. Use it ethically. You know, it's very powerful. Don't just run around using on any girl you, 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 you have a crush on because she's going to get a little clingy. A little, a little bit, yeah. yeah. I mean, you get, get some, some stories, very, you get very clingy. So yeah, definitely uh, make sure you're using it wisely. Yep. So check it out. Let us know what you think. Hey, it's Bobby. If you like this video, make sure you hit the big subscribe button below. Every Wednesday, I release a brand new video on creating attraction, avoiding the friend zone, looking less desperate and needy, and more confident, high value, and masculine around the women you're talking to. Every video will include specific techniques and tactics that you can use immediately. So if you like this video, make sure you subscribe.